Dear partners and colleagues, welcome to the next edition of Grita Meetups. My name is Ksenia Dolia. I'm Technology Partners Community Manager. I'm joined here today uh, by my colleague Sergei Gavrinov, Implementation Consultant. Thank you, Ksenia. Uh, so in case that's the very first time that you decided to tune in, um, uh, Grita Meetups is a series of uh, telematics uh, virtual events where we gather uh, telematics experts and IoT professionals. Um, so, uh, and, and in fact, I'm, I'm really envy you in if you uh, watch us for the very first time because uh, you have a whole, uh, a whole season of telematics meetups ahead of you. Um, you can find all our recordings on our YouTube channel uh, and also on our website. Please find link in the description below. Uh, you can rewatch uh, all the meetups starting from the very first uh, when we discuss the COVID-19 impact on IoT uh, and how the businesses should adapt to the new reality. Uh, and uh, you can watch up to uh, VLON live hubs, live hacks and updates, uh, up to uh, the meetups with the hardware manufacturers and connectivity providers. Uh, so, and also don't forget to add to your calendar our next broadcast because uh, the next meetup would be a GPS hardware manufacturer's top 10 award. So we will uh, reward those manufacturers who showed the most significant growth of VLON uh, during the la last 12 months. The meetup will, uh, will take place on the 30th of July. So the next one would be VLON Top 50 Global. Uh, traditionally, we uh, reward our partners, uh, our beloved customers uh, that uh, were the most, um, the most successful and the most growing the last year. And uh, the very last meetup would be uh, the IoT Project of the Year Award. That's something new. And I recommend you to tune in in case you would like to know who provided the most ingenious, the most innovative solution uh, in telematics. This meetup will take place on the 13th of August. Uh, so the topic of our today's conversation uh, is public transportation and the solutions um, that fits the requirements of the end users and the, also the state regulators operating in the industry. Uh, so it's not a coincidence that we continue uh, the topic that we started a few weeks ago during a route planning webinar. So maybe we would need to wait uh, some time until our buses uh, and trains become fully autonomous, but still uh, the age of the connected public transportation has already arrived. Uh, so ordinary citizens, they expect to find the schedule of their local buses in the handy mobile app. Uh, in here, we definitely need uh, real-time tracking and uh, the calculation of the estimated time of arrival. The governments, uh, they are looking for uh, uh, the implementation of the secured public transportation. And of course, they uh, would like to increase its efficiency and at the same time reduce the carbon emission. So these goals won't be possible to achieve without uh, a good uh, fleet management tool. And the requirements, they doesn't stop there. Uh, the, the video telematics is already a must have for uh, the most uh, of the end users working in public transportation. So the question is how to satisfy all these various needs. And fortunately, I have here the experts that can answer this question. So please allow me to present you Anatoly Tagirov, CEO at B-Track GPS. Uh, Leon Zhu, Product Director at Hohen. And of course, my colleague Sergei uh, Gavornov will have his own take on the question. Thank you. Uh, so uh, let's pass from the theory of route planning to the practical cases uh, of uh, the telematics uh, in public transportation. Our uh, first speaker will be uh, our Leon. Uh, Drew from Hohen. Leon, do you hear us? Not here. Yeah, Not here. that's here? great. Here? Yes. Okay great. okay, great. Thank you very much. 
Okay. Uh, thank you, Casinha. Thank you very much. Thank you for a kind of introduction. And uh, uh, hello, everyone. I'm company has already been built. And uh, we are uh, actually the big guys in China that it with uh, uh, Wailan. And uh, actually, we have been running a uh, wide part in the conference offline for many times. So today, I'm going to very thrilled to be here joining the uh, online webinar for the first time. Uh, actually, along with our integration with Wailan, uh, now uh, more and more customers are benefiting from the video telematics uh, so it is our great pleasure and the honor to be here to share one of those successful projects we have and for all. Okay, so uh, let's start. And uh, firstly, please allow me to uh, introduce uh, uh, the background of this case. Okay. Yes. And uh, sorry, maybe a bit uh, network problem. And uh, firstly, please let us have a look at uh, the background of this uh, the case uh, in Sri Lanka. As most uh, uh, commercial fleets, there were only trackers with uh, uh, buses, but uh, actually, whenever any accidents and disputes happened, the fleet operators can only spend a lot of analysis. So there were no guarantee for the rights for the both the passengers and the drivers, and uh, for the seats, uh, the drivers sometimes even may take the bus for personal use at night. Uh, driver behavior is also not uh, monitored well. And uh, besides our safety, the parents of the children also need to know uh, their children's uh, status uh, anytime. Uh, and last but not least, uh, and sometimes the most important, the end users, uh, the bus fleet owners, they want a, a cost-effective, affordable solutions to resolve these uh, uh, problems. So based on this uh, situation, uh, which is a very compact uh, video surveillance pitch, a uh, two-channel and a dual lens uh, cameras. Okay, let's go to the next. Okay, and uh, sorry, and okay, uh, this is the solution that uh, we and Cloud provided to our cases. Uh, as you can see, we provide the most uh, cost effective package, the mini MDVR and uh, uh, dual lens camera. Actually, uh, if you remember, this is actually exactly what we have released in the uh, Good Time Telemix 2019 last summer in Minsk. And now uh, this pack has already been widely used uh, uh, around the world. Uh, this package uh, not only very cost effective regarding the material cost, but also can save a lot of uh, installments and in the traffic by H.265. Uh, so this can uh, provide a very competitive solution for the... Uh, and in this solution, as you can see, the wireless and the new bus, and also more importantly is the uh, app uh, developed by our partner Cloud IP, like the Shuttle and the Go4 apps, uh, has or, uh, also been. Sensors, uh, including the different, uh, including the few uh, level sensors, to make it uh, as a quite ready solution, uh, so that it can be uh, replicated easily. Uh, other uh, projects. 
Okay, can we? Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, after deploying system, uh, we have been receiving very positive feedbacks from the users. Uh, firstly, the customer got the all-in-one solution booster tracking, the video, and the reports, and the, the, all the system in, uh, in, in one system at a very, at the best affordable cost. And as a kind of threat, actually, the, uh, after deploying this system for several months, the crime and accidents rates greatly are reduced. And even if some disputes happened, the evidence can also be very easily checked, uh, either from the MDVR or remotely from the wireless uh, platform. And the application like uh, the uh, new bus and the shuttle apps uh, de uh, developed by Cloud AP has also helped uh, the uh, fleet operators uh, greatly improve their uh, dispatch efficiency, including for the school bus and also the staff bus. And uh, also the parents can uh, easily get uh, the, their children's status and any information can be pushed uh, very conveniently to their uh, mobile. So uh, actually, uh, we also have, uh, as you can see, the snapshots of the video. Actually, uh, we also should have a video showing here, but uh, due to the network uh, uh, failure, maybe you can check it later with us. Actually, uh, regarding the software part, the uh, fleet owners just only need to open the wireless to monitor all, uh, including the live streaming, the GPS, the playback, the historical videos, the reports, all of it. Uh, so this is a quite a, uh, 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 comprehensive uh, solution. Okay, let's go to the next. And uh, actually, besides of these uh, features, we are also uh, providing new functionalities uh, to the to enhance our public uh, transport solutions. As a video uh, telematics provider, along with the development of the uh, telecommunication technology, for example, 3G, 4G, 5G, and also the uh, rapid uh, uh, evolution of video technologies, we are always thinking uh, what we would be, what should be the next uh, uh, trend of the video telematics. Uh, in the point of view of Hohen, we think that uh, the video telematics should be evolving at least by uh, three trends. The first is the integrated, the, because more and more features will be invented. Actually, they need to be uh, put it into the same one hardware. And the number two is intelligent, uh, because according to our experience, the people actually will not be satisfied by uh, we will not be satisfied with uh, so many uh, videos uh, the afterwards, after the accidents. So a very precise uh, intelligent uh, detection is very much needed. And the number three is also the affordability. Uh, because the video telematics, if we want to make it uh, as popular as the GPS tracking and make it uh, really scalable, actually the, uh, the total cost uh, of uh, operation should also be optimized and become less and less. So based on these three uh, principles, uh, our company, uh, Hohen, we are providing the all-in-one devices uh, like the all-in-one AI MDVR, AI dash camera, and the AI thermal terminal for the uh, COVID-19. Uh, especially the uh, AI thermal terminal, uh, under this uh, global uh, coronavirus epidemic, uh, we developed uh, uh, this new device uh, several months ago, and uh, which also has all in one uh, features, including the thermal detection, the time attendance, and the face recognition all in one. And it has already been widely used in the world due to its uh, fastest responding speed and the highest accuracy of detection, and also the uh, widest uh, detection range comparing with the uh, similar products in the uh, markets. And more importantly, as you can see here, all our products uh, uh, will be open and fully integrated with the wireless and the flash B, and also compatible with all the apps in the wireless uh, ecosystem. And uh, good news is that our uh, new AI thermal terminal uh, was also recently integrated uh, by flash B, uh, by the work of our partner Cloud IP. And uh, our uh, intelligent uh, detection devices and uh, the a thermal terminal are also being tested in the in the local markets. Uh, 
Okay, so to conclude, through these uh, principles and our products, and we believe uh, this will help us to contribute to making the uh, video telematics more and more popular and benefiting uh, more and more people uh, in the world. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, I will be happy to discuss. Thank you so much, Leon. Dear audience, please allow me to apologize for the technical problems that we had during your presentation. Uh, please uh, rest assured that uh, you will be able to rewatch uh, the recording of this meetup on YouTube without any technical issues. So it seems that we should pray to the gods of the internet more. <laughs> Hope it will, he will spare us in the future. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you very much, first of all. So yeah, please feel free uh, to leave your questions and comments in the chat. Uh, and also please feel free to share your experience in public transportation telematics. We are interested to know your opinion. So in the meantime, let's pass to our uh, next speaker. So Anatoly, could you please uh, share your experience in public transportation? You're muted, you're muted. Is it okay right now? Do you hear yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. It works. Uh, so for the beginning, we should test the connection and check if our prey delivery to the grot, or it's okay already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's working. It's very good. Uh, okay, yeah. Let me start. Uh, thank you for the intro and for this opportunity being here. Uh, I already see and I know that many of our customers uh, from all over the world are connected and uh, they are watching us right now. Uh, I can just count all the continents, Asia, Europe, uh, South America, uh, both Americas, in fact, Middle East, uh, all of them are here now. Hello, everyone. And this, this fact uh, makes our meetup uh, is truly global and it's great, I think. Uh, so, as mentioned before, our topic is the public transportation. Uh, all of all the countries in the world uh, right now are suffering from this pandemic, but uh, in the meantime, it has the positive side. As each crisis, it pushes the new developments and new, new startups, new technologies to to arise uh, during this time. Uh, if it if we check the practice of fighting with COVID uh, in different countries, we can see that uh, European countries and the USA countries uh, and the USA as well, uh, they launched a lockdown, but they didn't stop the public transportation in their countries. Uh, in Ukraine, for example, the lockdown started in the middle of the spring and on the beginning it was the same, but uh, in a few weeks the government uh, implemented new restrictions for public transportation. They close the subway, close it all, all the all kind of uh, roads, uh, and um, obviously it could it couldn't take too long. Economic reasons forced the government to make restrictions weaker to cancel them, but they are making it partially. For example, the one of the main rule was to have in one vehicle, uh, public vehicle, only ten people. So uh, it pushed the municipalities and uh, city authorities to, um, to seek for the solutions that provide remote control. Uh, they were looking for flexible solutions that can be adapted to various and changing requirements, adapting fast, uh, working in harsh environment due to the climate in Ukraine and uh, secure solutions. Uh, this successfully matched with the releasing of new product in Bitrex, uh, Bitrex and DVR. And in the meantime, uh, starting from the winter, we were working together with Gurtam uh, engineers to improve new feature in the alone video, I mean video monitoring model. Uh, we were working together using the, your software and our hardware to improve all the uh, existing uh, features and develop new ones. Um, so uh, right now I can move to the presentation itself. Um, let me start, start it and uh, I'm turning it on. Yeah, hope you see everything. Uh, so let me present our equipment itself. Here you can see uh, our MDVR and three 
various IP cameras. Basically, we have two product lines, standard line and premium line. Uh, both of them uh, include uh, several camera IP camera types. The solution is not analog, it is IP. Um, both of these uh, lines were used, used in public transportation projects in Ukraine. Uh, let me tell you a few words about the functionality of our MDVR. It is a multifunctional device, mainly designed for automotive application area, of course. Uh, on board, it is equipped with a high-speed processor. It has the Linux uh, operation system, operating system. Uh, it uses uh, two te video decompression technologies, uh, 265 and 264, uh, and it can be 4G or 3G. Uh, Besides that, we can uh, say that uh, MDVR becomes a new. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, also, we, we can uh, also we have a GPS locating technology in it and Wi-Fi model as well. Uh, in the nearest time, we will release a new version, and this new version uh, will include uh, a lot, uh, a few digital interfaces like RS232 and 485. And as you see, the MDVR will become a true hub in the track that will be uh, that will allow uh, customers to significantly raise the volume of their solutions and to attach various external sensors as well uh, like fuel solutions i am talking about fuel level meters digital fuel flow meters and uh, rfid solutions and all of that um, the mdvr itself has seven operation modes uh, it has photo mode uh, circle photo with selected time interval, circle video, fixed duration video, video with start and end by event, event. for example, if you set an event like an accident, uh, you, you will receive the videos uh, uh, before the video, video recording that will include time before the event started, the event itself and a little bit last uh, and, and a little bit after the event. Uh, then video with the event in the center, time lapse photo, and live broadcasts. Of, of course, we can use two uh, types of protocols for that. Uh, by using the special so so software, it significantly significantly reduces the data storage, and uh, the uh, uh, reduces reduces the data storage by recording exact information that the operator needs. Uh, for example, if we take the Ukrainian projects, municipal projects, you see that uh, there were two projects in two Ukrainian cities, both of them run on VLON. Uh, the, during the implementation and the, and the first part of the projects, testing part of the projects, we, work, we worked with VLON, uh, uh, testing our equipment and improving the video model. And uh, the, I mean, the road test and researches and all of that. Uh, basically, in those projects, uh, there we used uh, MDVR with uh, two IP cameras, but uh, the device itself supports up to four now, and later it will be eight cameras or even more. Uh, the main idea of the project was to raise the security of the public transportation, uh, then uh, to have the possibility to visually control the quantity of the passengers due to COVID, new rules of COVID-19. Uh, and a uh, very important feature, all data was stored on additional uh, client server for security reasons. We do not uh, receive any data on our servers. The device is absolutely locked on the client, by the client. And uh, in the meantime, device use VPN communication, uh, VPN uh, encryption of communication. Um, so uh, right now I will ask the hosts to launch a video that I sent it before to you and you will be able to see how it works on the ground based uh, as a ground based solution the uh, system installed it on our production office and uh, you will be able to check on Violon uh, how does the in user interface look like and what you can do uh, please turn on the video Sorry, uh, unfortunately, we can't yeah. broadcast uh, your okay. video right I now. See. However, 
uh, it will be available in the description uh, below this mm -hmm. particular meetup. So, uh, dear mm -hmm. audience, uh, you will be able to see uh, the uh, real life uh, video, you know, the, the, that shows the implementation of uh, the system the, and the user case that Anatoly presented. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Ksenia. Uh, then we can talk closer with the interested clients after. And I will show everything. But, but, but you can believe me that it's working fluently on Vialon. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want further, I can show you the, some benefits of the system. Uh, as I said before, it supports up to four IP cameras now. Uh, later, it can be eight or more. I hope in the nearest months. But usually for the vehicle, it, it doesn't uh, necessary to have such big amount of cameras. Four is absolutely enough. Usually we use uh, one camera watching on the driver and it can detect while the driver is on his, dri on his working place. Uh, then we use two cameras to look in front of, to the front and to the rear sides uh, of the bus, for example, if, if we talk about the bus. And one more camera looking to the saloon, to the passenger's area to, to see the um, situation. Uh, then uh, SD card. We use the SD cards instead of HDD. It's more reliable, more secure, uh, and more. Uh, it, it requires a, a, much less space, of course. And uh, after road test, we decided not to go with the HDDs because uh, vibration kills the memory, the, the hardware itself. Uh, and then uh, the Linux, as I told you, operation system is based on Linux and it's very flexible and uh, secure. So we can uh, always modify the equipment exactly as we need. Uh, the VPN, VPN communication is protect. The communication is protected and goes inside the VPN channel. And secure data transfer means that uh, all the data transferred only to the client servers. We have issues in Ukraine in public in private sector when the customers uh, require this uh, as a main feature. So we don't get any data if you don't want to. Uh, FTP protocol is the way of um, of sending the transferring the information, the data, uh, the device transfers via FTP protocol, stores data in the meantime in the own memory and uh, sends them via FTP protocol to the dedicated server. Um, speed, uh, speed means the, the possibility to add uh, our solutions connected with the speed limitation. Uh, position means GPS tracking. Uh, model, uh, built-in GPS tracking model 4G or 3G. Source button is a feature for the driver. It's obvious. Uh, driver ID means our RFID solutions that can be connected uh, with the MDVR. Uh, RPM and gen control, uh, it's obvious. And full, uh, full control means you can provide uh, two levels of control. If we talk, for example, on the next slide, you see it. So you see it very good. Uh, if you talk about the application areas, uh, all of them have the uh, have the possibility to uh, not not the possibility of of, of all of these uh, businesses. They have frauds with the fuel. They can have frauds with the fuel, so that uh, on in each of uh, on any vehicle we can control the process of loading and unloading the fuel at least. If you talk about fuel transportation and fuel carriers, we can control the valves on the of the big fuel tank where the fuel is transported, and the camera can detect when someone occurs in the in the in front of it. Uh, for the agriculture, for example, uh, we use it mainly in Ukraine. Um, we use uh, during the harvest collection to control the technique, uh, the vehicles working in the fields to transportation of the harvests. Uh, uh, and, uh, and and many other things, and we have a special dedicated bitrack camera that is uh, very protected and developed for harsh conditions like working in fields. Uh, logistics means that we have projects where we can we mainly control the drive, driver and all all, what, um, all all around the driver we control the roads, we control the rear doors, if in case if it's refrigerator or some kind of valuable cargo. It's a good feature for the owners. Mining means that uh, we, we are working on the um, on the 
specific particular version or of our MDVR that will allow it to work underground in very harsh conditions with the huge humidity and uh, different temperature uh, up and downs. Uh, and we have partners in South America uh, with whom we, we expect to implementing our uh, technologies in the nearest months. Uh, West management, uh, it was a case in Ukraine where we controlled uh, during uh, this case, we mainly, mainly controlled the amount of beans, uh, I mean dust beans, uh, waste beans. Each time when the bean is unloaded into the vehicle, the event started recording. So that operator has all the information and proof for the, uh, for the provided services on the planet roads. And it, it significantly raised the efficiency of the business. And construction vehicles, as I said before, uh, various area of implementation to control there, uh, including the fuel management and driver management, uh, a lot of other points. So as you see, mainly the system is very flexible. Uh, this is only a part of uh, projects that I showed you, and it can be applied to many other projects. E even we have um, developments that uh, are connected with the plate recognitions and all of that, all, uh, and uh, all of that based on the uh, on the platform on which our device is built built in. Uh, mainly, I am finished with my presentation. Thank you for your attention. You see the contacts, and we can continue later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natori. We have the questions from the chat. Like, first of all, the audience would like to confirm uh, where the, the MDVRs um, broadcast a live video where the, we're talking mm -hmm. about streaming here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. It's possible yeah. upon request. Upon request. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and the second question is, uh, can the system blur the passenger faces if required by local authorities? It's, it's mm, like smartphone smart functionality smart that depends uh, on camera from one side and requires additional developments. We didn't have such task before, we didn't do that. For now, processing is done on two tasks. Uh, first is the recognition of the driver on his driving place, on his working place in front of the steering wheel. And the second is the car plate recognition. Car number. Uh, car number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so, so th that so was the processing, yeah. So, uh, so in your projects, you are more focused on the recognition than on blurring faces. So the yeah, <laughs> it wasn't required in our project, yeah. so we didn't have such task. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for your question, Anatoly. Uh, dear but, uh, but audience, I'm sorry. again. Uh, to, 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 this, uh, to this guy who asked you, uh, Basically, uh, um, if you need to blur faces, you can set a low resolution mode and you won't get the faces, but you will see the passengers amount and quantity and all of that, for example. That, because you can change the resolution of the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like... Yeah, why hard. not? Why not? Mm -hmm. And you can do it without extra development. So, yeah. so John, consider the, this mm -hmm. possibility. Okay, th thank you so much for your answers and uh, dear thank audience, you. please uh, feel free to post your questions and comments in the chat uh, on the YouTube. Uh, we will make sure that all your questions are answered. Uh, so uh, now uh, we had the possibility to uh, take a look at Leon's user case. Uh, it, it was a practical case by our partner from Sri Lanka Cloud IP. So in case you're watching, maybe uh, you can share more details in the chat about that. Uh, and also the case uh, by uh, Anatoly Bitrek uh, from Ukraine. Uh, so now um, let's maybe pass to our expert, Sergey. So being an implementation consultant at Gurtam, um, he assists our partners uh, with the choosing the right functionality for this and that niche of telematics. So Sergey, please share your thoughts on public transportation. Thank you so much. I'm happy to share our Nimbus solution, which is a VLAN-based solution application, and it is scheduled transportation management. Scheduled because uh, usually buses or some objects, they operate on schedule. 
transportation because the, the, transport, the passengers and other stuff. And management because you can control every aspect of it. So in today's presentation, I'm going to say why, go, why do we need to use Nimbus, how to set up, and I'll give you an overview about the success stories on Nimbus application. So let's dive into why do we need, need to use Nimbus. The first, because obvious it's free, we own base solution, so you don't need to pay extra for it. It is here, so please start using it. Also, it is user-friendly interface. Uh, it means that the dispatchers and passengers uh, don't need to learn a lot about the application. I think that it's possible to start working in bus in just one hour. Only just imagine one demonstration and then you all in the Nimbus application. Also, we, get, we have a feature, access control list. It means that it's possible to create different roles for the dispatcher, one who's going to create the routes and schedules, another one who's going to uh, edit the schedules or maybe to assign different buses on the routes, and that's it. And for those who very experienced in Nimbus application and VLON. There is also API for custom development. It means that based on the API from API from Nimbus, it is possible to create your own application, a mobile one, to cover all the customers' needs. So the next point, how to set up. So let's dive into VLON. Yeah, everything starts from VLON. So basically, the scenario is simple. You have a unit, so you connect the unit to VLON, and the unit is going to be here in the monitoring panel. So in the monitoring panel, you can see the unit that it is moving on the map. So how to start using? Scheduled transportation is about stops and schedules. So the first step is, is to create these stops. So there are two ways. The first one, you can create the geofences. You can do it manually using the geofences feature, or you can import all the geofences via KML, KMLZ file format. Also, sometimes every city has a set of the public, public stops, public bus stops. So it is also possible to contact our support team, our map specialist, and they can generate this geofences so you can upload to VLON and start creating the schedules. Because in most cases, when you go for a pilot for the transportation management, you don't know the schedules. So how to find out? Yeah, you need to create the geofences and then we're going to execute the report on the geofence visits. So here I have the report template Geofence is visiting. I'm going to pick the, our bus and execute it. Here we're going to have the geofences all in one, our bus. Yeah. So here you can see group geofences. Finish route number one, start stop one, stop number two, etc. So uh, having this information knowing when the first stop was visited, at which time we can create the, the stops in Nimbus. And now it's the right time to go to Nimbus application. To go to Nimbus app, you need to click this button, apps. So you need to find Nimbus app, which is here. Here it is. So when you click it, you're going to see the dashboard. In the dashboard, you can see all the rides active for today. The units online, the units are behind or have left schedule, and all the stops and routes available. So some basic information about the, your bus transportation system. So how to start? First, we need to go to the stops tab. In the stops tab, we're going to import stops from a file. So it means that in VLON, we can export our stops 
and then import them to Nimbus application, right? So when the stops are imported, you can modify them. So there are two types of stops available, circle and polygon. You save it, pick the type of the bus or pick the type of the transport, bus, stroller, bus, and tram, etc. Save it. Then next, we need to go to the routes. The route is the, is the movement between two points, like from the very beginning, from the depot number one and to, to the end depot. So I name it Anjiva and Antananariva direct and return. Direct, we start from it and return. So this is the last point. If you go to the settings of this particular route, you'll find the stops. So to add the stops, or when you create the route, you need to pick all the stops here, right? So all the stops are added, and now we can create the schedule. So the schedule is the time of arrival of the particular bus to the particular bus stop. So using VLAN reports, we have the schedules, we have the timing. So you can simply use this time plus minus a couple of minutes, and then the schedule is here. Also, for this particular case, we have a unit, root bus, that we, is assigned to this particular route. Right, yes, route. So we have the direct and return, and also we have return and direct routes. The same thing, we've got the schedules, and we've got the units. After, we need to combine those routes, because we need to have a beautiful block. So the block consists of different routes that uh, has the same, it have the same uh, location, I would say. So here in the root, when you modify it, uh, you can see it consists of two routes, and it consists of the particular bus. So basically, when you create a new block, uh, you need to name it, Let's leave it. So let's edit it. So we have this particular route. Uh, when you click to the little icon here, it is possible to edit it. So here we have the all this our schedules. The schedule number one, two, like direct and reverse way. So the block is configured. Now in this tab, we're going to have the rights for today. So there are two rights left for today. This one, waiting for the black box units. And also there another right that's going to be at 6.05 p.m. So also it is possible to print the right for the driver, that the driver can get this information and he can know where he needs to to move during the day. So in the last tab, we've got the units that are online, and we can see that our particular bus is in critical delay. So the dispatcher can contact the bus driver and understand what's going on with the unit. So everything is working, and at the end of the day, we can generate the reports on the movements. So in this case, all we can do is to select the type of the report. Different report times available, root rights or unit rights. Let's say do this root rights, let's select our root, direct the interval for the whole month, execute it, and now we've got all the rights that were done. For example, here you can see the duration of the, of the rights, average duration, hurry, delay, stops, and the results. Also, when you click to this button, it is possible to see the actual route of the bus. 
So we can see that at this particular place, our bus left the route. Here is also. So this is kind of digitalization. It is possible to export this right to the Excel file format. What is more, this was all the information for the dispatchers, but for the passengers, we have the feature that calls the locator. The locator feature you can find in the administration, and the locator is here. So how it works? You can create the link, and the link will generate an the group. All the rights will be here. So this is a sample link that you can save to the custom fields of the vehicle, for example. And when you click on it, you're going to view the, all the stops and the buses. When you click on these fields, it is possible to select a particular bus stop. So here you can see when the next bus is coming. What is more, it's possible to select the route, Let's say this one. And here we can see when the next bus is coming to this particular stop. What is more, there is a good use case practice when you copy this particular link and you're going to put it to the QR code generator and this QR code you can copy and print to the bus stop. So the passenger, when he at the bus stop, he can scan for this QR code and he can view its current position and he can see when the next bus is coming. So pretty simple, right? Yeah, basically that's it. We have VLAN, we have Nimbus application that is working fine and we've got a lot of analytics that can be used to modify the existing schedule system. Let's move back to our presentation. So, your success stories. All the success stories or the use cases you can find on our website, the gutam.com blog. So, there is a couple of articles that I can show to you. For example, this one. This particular case was applied in Mongolia. Uh, here you can find the what features we used, how it was applied, and what result the end user got using this solution. Also, let's say Nimbo Smart City. So it's also possible using the API, integrate the Nimbus application with the information displays. And then this information display can be installed on the bus stop and the passengers can view when the next bus is coming. Also, pretty useful. Also, if you're interested in more uh, cases, you can simply go to our website again, gutam.com, and the blog section, and here you need to click We All Not Practice. So here you'll find a lot of interesting cases based on VLAN. Basically, that's it. Thank you so much for your attention. Ksenia? Thank you so much, Sergei. Thank you. So I have several questions to you, actually. Uh, so the first one. Uh, assuming we're using Nimbus for school buses, is there a way to skip a stop if a student is sick that day? A stop is something universal that, uh, for example, uh, if the student is sick, it, means, it doesn't mean that uh, the other student can visit this particular stop. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably, yes, it's possible to skip for the bus to skip this stop, and then it can be displayed in the Nimbus application. But for the, bus, uh, for the school uh, buses, it would be useful to use maybe another solution like a logistic application if, you, if it is important to understand whether the children are on bus or not. So I think that in this particular case, uh, the school bus picks up uh, the students at their homes. Yep. So it's quite possible that there is 
only one student in this talk. So as yeah. far as I understand, Sergey, uh, you were suggesting uh, maybe not to use Nimbus, but also consider logistics as a more flexible solution for, for it, right? Yeah, if it's important to know whether one particular student was picked up, though, better to use like uh, the order system that the driver can confirm, yes, the student is here, bus. Okay, I understand, thank you. Also, it's possible to use the combination between VLON and Nimbus, where in VLON, they're going to be like RFID scanner, and then if the student doesn't, is on the sick leave, for example, he will not put his card, and it means that uh, then later on the report, uh, we can see that the, the student was not here. That's it. Okay, so that there are d different ways uh, we can play yeah. with the features of VLR, basically. So, uh, dear audience, please uh, also let us know in case uh, you have any extra questions or you uh, would like us to uh, expand more on some uh, points of the presentation. Yeah, John uh, has, has a question. Uh, can we have graphical reports in Nimbus? Graphical, basically we've got the reports in the tabular view, but uh, it depends what kind of information you'd like to get. Graphic is the relation between the speed of the mileage, then you can use VLON. You've got the charts in it. Also, it is possible to uh, have the Excel file format from Nimbus and use on the Microsoft and Google Sheets. It's possible to create beautiful graphs. So there is a way to have the graphs using the information. Okay. It depends on the requirement, what kind of the graphs would you like to have. Thank you. Thank you, Sergei. Uh, thank you for sharing your expertise and for answering your questions, uh, the, the questions from the chat. Uh, so, uh, dear uh, experts, uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us today, for uh, sharing your success stories in public transportation. Uh, so, uh, dear audience, in case you would like to learn more about the devices that featured in this meetup, please feel free to contact uh, Leon and uh, Anatoly. Uh, I'm sure that Hoen and b track teams, they will be able to uh, share with you detailed information about the devices. And also in case you would like to go deeper into details of the Nimbus application, uh, please check our webinar page because we have uh, several educational videos about Nimbus and other VLON-based applications. So as always, uh, the link to the webinar page would be in the description of this video. video. So today we are wrapping up the first season of the Telematics TV series. So after the IoT Project of the Year Award, uh, we will switch off the lights in this beautiful studio and uh, we will take a break until um, the mid of September. Uh, so uh, it all started several months ago in March uh, with a simple Zoom uh, conversation, Zoom call with uh, different Gurtam partners we started uh, discussing the impact of COVID-19 and uh, how the business should adapt to this new reality. Uh, but uh, we managed after that to switch from the reactive approach to, uh, to a more proactive one. So during our meetups, we uh, managed to detect uh, the opportunities that are still out there despite all the crisis. We uh, managed to discuss how to work with these opportunities, what solutions uh, our uh, telematic suppliers, maybe, maybe hardware, software, or connectivity can offer uh, for our projects. So this tendency, this positive tendency shows us that um, a, a telematic solution provider will be uh, always ready to find uh, a way to build different projects, to grow his business, to move forward. Uh, IoT will never be an easiest branch of business and uh, the system integrator should combine multiple uh, things at the same time. So the system integrator should be an investigator that contacts the customer and unravels what are the real issues of their business. So he should be a scholar that uh, is always up to date, the, the, the person who learns everything about new technology. Uh, and of course, sh he should be an inventor 
that creates new solutions uh, using the existing tools. He should be an engineer who implements those solutions. And of course, he should be an experienced party goer in order to survive the gala night after the telematics conference. Uh, so here at Gurtam, we love to uh, celebrate uh, those uh, special people, those professionals in telematics, and we love to celebrate the innovative companies. So that's what we are planning to do during our next broadcast. Dear partners, we can't get to you uh, in person, but the technology will help us. Our uh, next meetup would be uh, the GPS hardware manufacturers top 10 award. We will reward the hardware manufacturers who showed the most incredible growth on VLON last, uh, during the last 12, 12 months. So this uh, award will take place uh, next week on the 30th of July. Uh, and of course we will pass to our traditional uh, VLON uh, Top 50 Global Award. Of course, we will congratulate those without whom we, can, we couldn't be here today. Our partners, our customers, uh, those who implement those projects, those interesting projects that we heard about uh, today. Uh, so, uh, of course, tune in for the uh, Top 50 uh, ceremony uh, on uh, the 6th of July. And uh, on the uh, 13th of July, we will have something very special. We are doing it for the very first time, so it definitely, it's, it's not an event to miss. Uh, we will award uh, the, the most ingenious, the most innovative, the most game-changing projects uh, in telematics. We will um, distribute the IoT projects of the year awards. So uh, please tune in, it's uh, definitely worth your time uh, and uh, book it in your calendar. Uh, of course, the schedule uh, is in the available via the link uh, in the description of this video traditionally. So um, these uh, three events, uh, of course, will be broadcasted live on our YouTube channel. So subscribe, stay tuned. Uh, thank you for watching us today. Uh, we'll see you uh, at our awards uh, and, of course, see you uh, at the next season of Grita Meetups. Thank you so much. <laughs>